everybody, this is Kayla at the Twinsburg Library here for another awesome virtual vacation to Australia. So today we're going to read a nonfiction book about Australia and then we are going to learn how to make fairy bread and make our own rain sticks. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to read Living in Australia by Chloe Perkins. Hello, my name is Ruby and I live in Australia. Australia is a country where more than 22 million people live, including me. Australia is not just a country, it's a continent too. The earth has seven continents. Continents are the largest bodies of land on earth. More than 8,000 islands are also part of our country. On the continent of Australia, there are tropical rainforests in the northeast. In the southeast and southwest, you will find many farms. Along the east coast are mountains called the Great Dividing Range. Australia's tallest mountain is part of this range. Most of western and central Australia is called the Outback. Very few people live in the Outback, and the land there is mostly wild. At the center of the Outback is the Uluru, a rock formation that is sacred to the native people of Australia. The Outback is home to many interesting animals, such as the kangaroo, the koala, and the emu. Not all the animals in the Outback are cute and fluffy, though. Some of the most dangerous snakes and spiders on Earth call Australia home, too. Most Australians live along the coast, but Australia's capital city, Can Canberra, is farther inland. Perth is on the west coast of Australia. It has one of the biggest inner city parks in the world. The park is even bigger than New York City's famous Central Park. Sydney is famous for the Opera House designed by Jorn Utzon. He got the idea for its design as he was peeling an orange. Melbourne is at the center for sports. Many Australians love to play cricket, rugby, and soccer. I live on the eastern coast of Australia in a town called Byron Bay. I live in a house with my grandma and grandpa. I have one older brother named Teddy. My grandma is an artist. She paints pretty pictures and works at an art store n near the beach. My grandpa is a plumber. He makes sure people have water for their homes. My brother is away at college in Brisbane, a city about two hours away. My grandma wakes me up each morning before school. I put on a skirt and my special uniform shirt. After I get dressed, I brush my teeth and comb my hair. Then I meet my grandparents in the kitchen for breakfast. Today, we eat eggs and toast. Then my grandma brings out a special treat that we usually save for tea time, lamingtons. Lamingtons are little sponge cakes covered in chocolate frosting and coconut. Yummy! After breakfast, my grandpa drives me to school on his way to work. Our school year lasts from late January until mid-December. We have summer vacation in December. Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere, so our seasons are the opposite of those in North America, Europe, and much of Asia, too. There are 18 students in my class. We study English, math, science, computers, gym, social studies, and creative arts, such as acting, drawing, and dancing. Our first subject this morning is social studies. We are learning about the history of Australia. 50,000 years ago, the ocean... Uh, the ocean around Australia was not as deep as it is today. People likely came to Australia by, by land bridges and boats. Today, these people are as known as Australian Abor Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders. Aborigines came to the continent of Australia before ocean levels rose. The Torres Strait Islanders traveled a similar path, but they settled in the Torres Strait Islands. The Aborigines were hunter-gatherers, which means they, were, they hunted animals and gathered wild plants for food. Aborigines did not have writing before they passed knowledge so they passed knowledge down to their children through songs, dances, and spoken stories. As time passed, the aboriginal population grew to 750,000 people. More than 700 languages were spoken throughout the land. Starting in the year 1500, people from other parts of the world began sailing to Australia. In 1770, Captain James Cook arrived and claimed Australia for Great Britain. The first group of British settlers arrived in 1788 and more followed. 
The settlers fought the Aborigines for their land. The Aborigines fought back, but many of them were sick with diseases that the settlers had brought with them. Over the next 200 years, settlers stole the Aborigines' land and took most of their rights. By 1829, Great Britain had taken over, n over nearly all the Australia. News of jobs and cheap land brought even more settlers. As time passed, towns such as Sydney and Melbourne grew into big cities. Railroads were built to help people travel more quickly. Great Britain declared Australia an independent commonwealth in 1901. This meant that Australia became a country with its own government and its own laws, but Great Britain still had the final say over many of the Commonwealth's decisions. Australia became fully independent in 1986. In 1962, the Aborigines and Torres Strait Islanders fought hard for and won the right to vote. The government began helping Aborigines buy back the land that had been stolen from them. Today, Aboriginal and island cultures are celebrated during Nidoc Week every July. Okay. After our social studies lesson, we study math and English. Look, I got a good score on my spelling test. The way English words are spelled in Australia is sometimes different than from how they're spelled in the U.S. See, we spell the word color with a U. C-O-L-O-U-R. Now it's lunchtime. I'm eating ham and cheese sandwich. My friend is eating a sandwich filled with Vegemite, a tasty salty spread. My grandpa packs me a lunch, and sometimes he gives me money so that I can buy a treat at the canteen. A canteen is a little shop in the lunchroom where you can buy food. After lunch, I have science class, computer class, and art class. Then it's time for to go home. My grandma picks me up, and we walk to the art store where she works. Then we go back to the shop to unwrap some new paintings. These paintings were done by an aboriginal artist of the Arakwal people. The Arakwal people have lived in Byron Bay for more than 22,000 years. When my grandma is done working, we take a walk along the beach. My favorite thing about living in Australia is surfing. I've been surfing for two years now. Surfing is a popular sport in Australia because many beaches have a lot of big waves. My favorite surfer is Lane Beachley. She won seven world championships between 98 and 2006. Some of Beachley's world records for surfing still have not been broken. Grandpa picks us up from the beach and I wash up before dinner. We are grilling steak on the barbecue. My grandma makes a salad too. After dinner, we have a video chat with my brother in Brisbane. It's so nice to visit with him. After we say goodbye, I finish my homework and get ready for bed. I have posters on my walls of the beaches in Hawaii, Mexico, and South Africa. I would like to surf all of them when I grow up. Would you like to visit Australia someday? Very cool. So now let's have some fun and make a quick snack. So we're going to make a really, really, really easy snack that is popular at birthday parties in Australia. And all you need to make fairy bread is a slice of white bread, some butter, and some sprinkles. Now we call these type of sprinkles nonpareils, but they call them hundreds and thousands because there's hundreds and thousands of sprinkles in there. So all you have to do is it's super easy. You take some bread, you spread it with some butter, and you sprinkle it with sprinkles. Like I said, they usually have this at uh, birthday parties. It's very popular, and they call it fairy bread. And it's supposed to be good. I haven't tried it yet, so we'll have to see. So you just spread it with butter, like that. And then comes the fun part. You get to sprinkle it with sprinkles. It would help if I would have opened this before we started. Let's see. Oh, no. Here we go. And now we're going to try not to make a big mess. So what you want to make sure you do is put it on a plate so we don't have sprinkles getting everywhere and then we have to vacuum or sweep. So we're going to just we're gonna cover it with sprinkles and it makes it super colorful. Then you cut it into a triangle and you get a delicious, very sugary snack. I'm going to cut it to a little tiny triangle and let's see how it tastes. Mmm, crunchy bread. 
All right, so next, we are going to make a rain stick. I'm gonna show you two ways that we can make a rain stick. I'm gonna show, show you a real rain stick first. So this one is actually a cactus that was turned inside out. So the spines of the cactus are now inside, and it sounds like rain. And so this is an aboriginal uh, instrument, and so we're gonna make our own. So I'm gonna show you two different ways. The first way is that you just need a paper towel tube. You're gonna need paper and tape or glue for the bottom. You're going to need tin foil, and you're gonna need either beads or dry rice or dry beans or whatever little things you have laying around that'll make a cool rain sound. So first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take some tin foil and make a big sheet of it like this, and then we're gonna Want it into like a big long stick. Alright, go. Alright, squeeze it so it's nice and thin. And now we're gonna wrap it so it looks like a string or a spring. So we're gonna wrap it around our fingers like so. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is gonna go inside our thing. So like that, so we can make a little string, and then we're gonna stick it on the inside of our tube. Now I've already covered the end, and I'll show you how we're gonna cover the top end too. So we're gonna push that inside, and this is what the beads or rice or whatever you have is going to hit with. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our beads, and we're just gonna put a handful in there. Like I said, you can use rice, you can use beans. I just happen to have a big old bucket of beads, and then, well, you can start to hear it. So some of my beads are a little too big, but that's okay. All right, now we're gonna have to close up the end so we don't get beads everywhere. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of paper and we're going to trace it, trace our tube on our paper. It doesn't have to be perfect, like that. Then we are going to cut around. So you see I have my tracing, now we're gonna cut not on that line, but just about a quarter of an inch to a half inch around it. And I'll show you that in a second. So, you see there's my circle, and then I have my edge all the way at the end. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut little strips into that circle, like that. Oops, sorry. So you can see that I'm just, just cutting up to that line all the way around. And this will make it easier to fold down around our tube. All right, and you take your tube, you put this over top, and then you fold down all those little fans on the side, and then you can tape it or glue it, whatever you have, hanging around your house. Like so. and then it will be ready to decorate. Before I decorate mine, I'm gonna show you a different way of making it using nails. So you can see that, and then you can hear it. Just that like it. All right, so if you want and you don't wanna use your tin foil, you can actually use nails. So as you can see, I've poked some in a nice spiral pattern, I'll show you. Can you just make sure your nails don't poke through the other end because otherwise you're going to poke yourself and that would not be nice. So you just go ahead and you're going to poke the nails right through so that way you can see them all inside. And you're going to do the same thing as you're going to fill it with beads or beans or string. It's going to hit the nails on the way down like so. You could hear it. And there you go, you have your own, and then you cover it the same way we did the other one. Now a really cool way to decorate your brand new rain stick is in the style of Aboriginal art, which is called dot painting. So all they do, instead of filling a whole area with color, they use little tiny dots to make a cool pattern. So what you can do is you can take paint, or if you wanna do crayons and just draw circles, that works too, but paint's kind of fun. And you can use a pencil to do it. So I've got a pencil with a nice round eraser and I'm just going to dip it in my paint and use that as my circles and use it like a stamp. 
and then dip it around. And so we have really cool Aboriginal art. I'm going to use some yellow too. And you can make different patterns and do all kinds of fun things with your rain stick. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!